like, I don't know how to explain this to you, but I know I'm feeling more confident because like I'm figuring it out my way without using your formulas yet. But one thing I want to work on is like thoroughly understanding your formulas and thoroughly understanding the question types and knowing when to apply those formulas so I can get the right answer. That's a good way to go. And I want to caution you to not necessarily rely upon my formulas. I think it's good if you understand the way that I approach the game, but you don't necessarily have to do it my way as long as you're solving it within time allotted or within a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. But your own intuitive way, if it gets you the answer fairly quickly, that's great. And one of the nice things about logic games is that with all the explanations out there these days, at least for the official games, you can look at three or four different sources and see different ways that people approached it. And obviously that would take a tremendous amount of time to do for every single logic game. So I wouldn't do it for every game, but for the hardest ones, the ones giving you the most trouble, look at how different people approach it because there are different styles and there's not necessarily only one right way to solve it. No, I agree for sure. Like I said, there's some, there's some of the questions, like they just come to me right away, just like based on my own intuition that like this makes sense. So this has to be the answer because this doesn't make sense. But then there's also some times where I'll read a game and I'll just be like, geez, like I, I don't even know where to start. You know, like what, what formula do I apply? Like how many diagrams I'll have to read? Like what variables are, are important? What variables aren't important? Like, you, you know what I'm talking about. There's just a lot going on that I'm, I'm slowly trying to pick up. Like I said, I've just started. So, like, I'm not really holding myself too accountable to my mistakes because it's still early in the process. But I want to feel – I feel comfortable when I make a little bit of progress each and every day. And I forget the name of the one student. She was on her phone on vacation. And, like, I really related to her when she said that, like, some days she'll study and it'll be a good day. And then other days she'll study. And it's like, I, did, I don't even know what I just did today, you know? So – yeah, I just really, I think I just got to practice more, to be honest with you. And, and um, like educate, like be more knowledgeable with the test, like know what types of questions are which and how to proceed with them. Because sometimes I'll just go into a question blind using my own intuition and that's when I get it completely wrong. But the questions that I've seen before and like I kind of understand what to do, like with ordering games, like I'm getting really good at those. So I got to focus more on just like practicing and and applying your formulas and using my intuition. Agreed. And the, the familiarity will come with time. One, yeah. th- one suggestion for you, one thing you could do is if there's a game that you're totally lost on, you yeah. could look up an explanation for only the setup of the game, creating just the main diagram. Don't look at the rest of the explanation though. Don't look at the walkthroughs of the individual questions. Yeah. In that game. Just use a source like, like mine or others to give you a diagram yeah. and yeah. then try it on your own. Exactly. I'll watch your YouTube videos and I'll just watch how you diagram it. And then I'll pause the video. I'll try to answer the questions based on the diagram. And then I'll go, I'll replay your video and see how you did it in in comparison to how I did it. And believe it or not, sometimes I'll do it differently than you, but I'll still get the right answer. So that's how I know that I can't always apply this formula to this because everybody does things differently. You know, there's more than one way to get the right answer. Totally. And that speaks to what we were discussing earlier, how if you can solve it efficiently, that's fine. And honestly, I've solved the same exact game a few different ways on different attempts. Like I might do the same game a year or two apart and I'll solve it a different way each time and no way is right or wrong. It's just somewhat arbitrary in that moment, the direction I took. Okay. I got you. So yeah, that's just my basic concerns. But like I said, I've just started studying. I'm aiming to either take the October or the November test. I think my deadline is September 19th to decide. So I'm not, I'm not one question I have, I'm not understanding the, the, the canceling the score thing. So if I write my October exam and I don't like my store, my score and cancel it, like, what does that mean? Great question. So if you take, so the July LSAT is unique in that you get to see your score before deciding whether to cancel, but for all other test dates and in the future, you do not get to see your score first. So you mentioned if you don't like your score, you could cancel. That's not how it's going to work for you. What's going to happen is, let's say you take the exam and you don't feel good about it. Yeah. You have approximately, I think, five or six calendar days to cancel your score, but yeah. you will not actually know what your score was. Yeah. So not the best situation, but at least everyone's in the same boat. It's usually not a good idea to cancel because law schools only take the highest. They don't average multiple scores. So there's no real benefit to canceling. No, and they don't really care if you take multiple tests, do they? No, they don't really care. I mean, you don't want to have four, five, six yeah. takes on your record. It starts to look a little crazy. Plus, there is a new retake limit. You can only take the LSAT 
three times in one testing cycle, which runs from June to May. And you right. can only take it five times in five years. And if you, if you cancel, that still counts as a take. Yeah, no, I want to take it max like three times, but my goal is to take it twice. Cause I know the first time it's like, I'm going to get the jitters, you know, it's, I'm not going to be like fully confident cause I don't know what exactly I'm walking into. So like I'm aiming my second time is going to be like the, the time I hit a home run. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to actually challenge you Jacob, but just a little bit where your first take, don't assume it's not going to go well. Instead, take the approach of what could you possibly do to make your first time ideally the only time. Okay, yeah, for sure. Because if, you, if I can hit it out of the park on the first time, then that's great. And you could consider taking both October and November because that way you're only staying fresh on the LSAT for another four weeks or so. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my goal, to take either October or November or both, depending have on... You, have you, but you, I, got, I gather that you may not have registered yet. Have you registered? For the else, no, I have my uh, my uh, uh, LSAC account and all that stuff, but I haven't registered for anything yet, just because I want to study more and feel more confident. Like I will register. I have till September nineteenth, and um, I check the test the test centers and like I make sure there's availability because I saw one of your videos that said that the availability runs out quickly. But like I'm from Toronto and there's like a whole bunch of test centers, so I should be okay with that. I want to just feel more confident in my studies. And I still haven't even gone through all the sections. I've, I've only gone through logic games and logical reasoning. I haven't done the reading comprehension stuff yet based on the schedule. So I'm, I'm only like on week six of your schedule or week five. Okay, good. Well, you still got some time then. And I yeah. would say don't wait till the very last day of the deadline no. to register because although Toronto may have more availability than New York or Boston does right now, it yeah. could get filled up. Yeah. Who knows? I would say if you're considering October or November, maybe just register for November just to have something locked down. Okay. And then you could maybe add on October before that deadline if you can. Okay, you that's that you want it. Okay, I didn't think of that. That's pretty smart. So yeah, um, another question I have is I need to, uh, based on the materials, like it's just the LSAT prep test is like, that's pretty much the best thing, right? I have time. I study for like, I try to study for like at least two, three hours a day. Like I work part time. So I'll work in the morning and study in the afternoon. Some days my brain is more exhausted than others. So it's not two hours. It's maybe like an hour and a half or an hour. Some days it's like four hours. But um, yeah, I've just been honestly, I've just been following your, I've just been following the schedule. You sent me the three month and the four month. And I also went on LSAC and I downloaded some of their questions, the free, the free PDF sample questions. So that's what I've been doing. But um I'm in the States right now. Actually, I'm on vacation. I want to go to Barnes and Noble. There's more books here than there is in Canada. So I want to pick up some LSAC books. So I'm going to do that. And um, yeah, that's it. Really, I, I feel like a kind of like a rookie, to be honest with you. Like, I, I don't really I haven't really gone through everything yet. So I'm still like kind of learning the, the basics and the foundations. So like, I know not to get too down on myself. But at the same time, I want to see myself progressing at a faster pace than I am. So like, I you know what I mean? Like, it's sometimes it's frustrating. Sometimes I do well, sometimes I don't. I don't know. I think I just have to keep sticking with it. That's exactly it. And it is a bit of a slog. So I wouldn't necessarily expect that you're going to see massive gains right away, especially yeah. when you adopt a, do, a new technique. Your score could actually drop temporarily as you adjust to the new technique. So it could take some time. So just be patient with yourself and recognize that and acknowledge this is an extremely difficult exam. It's harder than any exam you've done up to this point. Yeah. So just... Be, you know, be patient with yourself, give it the time. And then when you're not sitting in front of your books or in front of the computer watching videos, see other ways you might be able to absorb passively either through an app or going on LSAC's site with the familiarization tool. There's questions on there. You could also listen to my podcast. I have two different LSAT podcasts. Yeah. Want to start absorbing material while you're in the car or on a walk or whatever. You can just learning information and then you'll feel less like a rookie as you absorb more background info on the test. I got you. But yeah, that's, th those are my main concerns so far. Um, just really just going through all the practice stuff, trying to, trying to understand the test. Like I found you through your podcast and I really uh, appreciated the way, like your, your, um, your mentality towards taking the test, like thoroughly understanding the ins and outs of it. You know what I mean? Like I want to, I want to grasp that. I want to like kind of be able to answer the question while I'm reading the variables, if that makes sense, like knowing what the question is going to ask me and like, putting the order in my head together before I even see what they're asking me. And like, I'm slowly starting to do that. Like with the, um, like with the, the second question after the orientation question, like the simple, like which one must be true or must be false. Like I can kind of 
slowly, slowly, slowly start to figure that out based on what variable, what the rules and the variables they're giving me. So yeah, like I said, just more practice. That's pretty much all I can, um, I can do like for right now. No, don't you think? Yeah. You're, you're sticking with the schedule. You're doing what you got to do. I'm glad you're still making the time for this despite being on vacation. And yeah. so just, just keep putting in the work and you'll get there. I also want to suggest you talked about really getting the mindset of the test. I have had two discussions on my YouTube channel and podcast with a former writer of actual LSAT questions. Yeah. I want to throw, have you watched those or listened to those? I, it was an older gentleman. I forget his name, but I did watch one. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Stephen Harris. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. And so yeah. you've watched one. I'm going to send you links to both so you can watch the other as well, because he has a lot of great insights to share. And I think to get a top score is really important to understand how the test is constructed and see the exam from their perspective, how they're yeah. designing it and what they're looking to do. Yeah. Okay. And then another thing, like how, how much, how long do you think I should be studying? Like, I don't know. Like some days I'll follow the schedule and I'll finish like the 24 must be true, must be false or the, you know what I'm talking about. And like, half an hour 45 minutes and there's nothing else to do for that day and then other days i'll go through like logic games and you'll ask me to answer like 10 of them it'll take like almost like three hours so like do i just just follow the schedule or or what like how how do i approach that the schedule is more important for the level of specificity about what it recommends you do rather than the particular day-by-day breakdown and so if there's a day where you have extra time and you finish the assigned work pretty quickly then just go on to the following day's work yeah. Or you could add on or you could add on more practice problems of a given type if you feel it would benefit you. That's what I've been doing. And like on the on the take a break days and stuff, like some days I'll st- skip ahead and then like if there's a day I'm not really feeling it, then I'll use my break day that I that I didn't use for this day. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I'm I'm slowly getting over the frustration part of it and like telling myself like it's normal to get frustrated because like you said, it's like, I've never really taken a test like this before, but I just, I feel like once I feel more confident in my abilities, then I'll start getting better results. Cause also another thing I find myself doing is like second guessing myself on a lot of questions. And the questions that I second guess myself are the questions that I get right off the bat, but I'll second guess it. And then I'll choose the wrong answer because I'm not confident in myself yet. If that makes sense. Totally. Yeah. And especially on the easy questions, the first 10, Assuming you have a good foundation, you should trust your gut instinct on those. Okay, I got you. So yeah, I got to uh, I got to practice more. I got to get through all the sections, like especially the reading comprehension. I haven't even looked at that yet. And then um, that's pretty much it. And there's an essay at the end of the test, correct? Yeah, there is a writing sample. It's no longer at the end of the exam on test day. It is actually instead online, and you do it separately. You have up to one year to complete it. That's a new change this year. Okay, so so the test is only going to be three sections. Well, the test that I'm going to take, and then the writing sample, I have to do it online outside of the test center, right? Yeah, correct. So test day is about three hours. It's five sections, games, reasoning, reading comp, and then another logical reasoning, and then the experimental. But you're only doing multiple choice LSAT content. You're not doing the essay at the test center. So I wouldn't worry too much about the essay regardless, but we could talk about that another time. But basically, yeah, it's just right. something that you're you're typing on your computer later and it's not scored still. I got you. Yeah. So the logical reasoning, I'm pretty good at it. Like I consider myself to be a logical person, like with making predictions and stuff. And like, I can kind of uh, weed out the answer just on my basic uh, intuition, but the logic games, they sometimes give me a problem, especially the multi-level logic games where there's like, um, I forget, like, the, like back again, going to like the awards and like the people and stuff. Like I, sometimes the, um, the diagrams confuse me and I don't know if I'm right making the right diagram, if I'm making the wrong diagram, if I'm diagramming enough, if I'm diag, you know what I mean? So I just, like I said, got to keep practicing. That's pretty much it. That is the key practice. Look at explanations and detailed review. Okay. I got you. Yeah. And, um, you think the other students would appreciate if I like message them on Facebook? Cause I'm kind of doing this alone. Like my parents don't, they absolutely have no idea about this. Like my sister, she hasn't got there yet. So like, I don't know any friends are doing it. So I, sometimes I kind of feel alone in, um, in my studies. And I know that Brittany, she got a 170. Yeah. So like, I thought to message her because like, she definitely might have some tips that I haven't thought of her that like she, she's developed. So you think, you think it'll be okay if I just like message them and like ask them to study together? Like Absolutely. That's what I'm trying to foster, trying to foster a community here. And so I actually, on Facebook, 
I created a group chat just yeah. for students in the mastermind. You could post there. You can message in the group chat. You can message someone individually. Yeah. And that's totally fine. Yeah, that's what I want you to do, honestly. Okay, good stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much, these are my basic just questions and concerns that I've gone through thus far. And um, like, I really like this video. Like this was super helpful because like I haven't really spoken to anybody like about this before. Basically just practice, practice, practice. And um, be confident in yourself. That's what I've taken from this. Because like I said, I'm, I'm slowly getting into this and my confidence isn't there yet because I don't know, like I haven't gone through enough practice to know what's what, like what's right and what's wrong. So I just got to keep practicing, I guess, man. Yeah, keep at it, Jacob. You've been taking notes. You're really, you've always struck me as diligent and hardworking. And that's part of yeah. why I've wanted you in this group because you're looking to make massive changes and I think you'll get there. For sure. Yeah. I don't, I don't consider myself to be like the smartest person out of the bunch, but like if I'm, if I'm not getting something, like I, I really want to work hard at it to get it because I want to be up to par with everybody else. And I want to exceed my expectations. Cause I, truth is like, I really want to do good in this. Like my grades are on the cusp of getting into like a top school. So I think that my LSAT score is going to push me over that edge. So I really need this score or what my, I really want a 170, like a 171. That'll be like my goal. I believe that you have the aptitude within yourself. And like you said, you're feeling like a rookie right now. You're just getting familiar with it. But over time, I do believe you'll get there. Yeah. Do you think, do you think um, like those you know, October, November test dates, like from now till then studying like diligently, like two, three hours a day, like you think I can get there? Or do you think I need more time maybe? That's a good amount of time. And we'll know more as we get closer. But given that you've been studying for about six weeks already, and you've got at least another six weeks, if not more till October, or November, you've got plenty of time to make it happen. Okay. I got you. All right. Thanks, Steve. I, I appreciate this phone call. Honestly. Um, you've been a great help for sure. And um, if I have any questions, I can email you, right? Definitely. Please feel free to reach out. It was a pleasure to connect with you once again, read my emails, be in touch, attend the classes, and we'll talk soon. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. My pleasure, Jacob. Have a good one. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release.